<laughs> Let me start real quick. I need some monitors. I still don't have monitors. Yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on. You get me? Yup, yup, yup. Here we go. Thank you. One, two. Yes, yes. Too loud. Too loud. Too loud. Too loud. Look, y'all should come up here. Somebody should come up here to run the monitors out. One, yeah, this is good. Good. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. This is your first lesson in hip hop. First of all, you and LB. This is the first time I've come here in my 10 years. I've been coming to Las Vegas for 25 years. We watched hip hop build from the 80s here in this town. This town here, Las Vegas, this is one of the places where the spirit of hip hop lives. I will say this to you not because I'm here, but I travel all over and hip hop is not everywhere. It used to be everywhere, but now it's not everywhere. You'd be lucky to get real hip hop these days. The sad part to it is that Germany has real hip hop. France, real hip hop. Africa, real hip hop. Don't let me start with Japan. Japan. Big <laughs> hip hop. America, the birthplace. Somehow we're halting. But this might be a good thing. Here's why. You see, the cream rises to the top. I love it that we have so many black rappers in the industry today. <laughs> I love it! Because it makes bands like this shine. Everybody can't be fresh. Only a few of us can be. That means we need a lot of black people out there. And we have And we have an ample amount of blackness. Now, here's your first lesson in hip hop. It's called competence. Church. I'm in a university. I'm choosing my words deliberately. Competence. You see, when I walked on this stage, the sound was not right. Incompetence. Call it whatever you like. No disrespect to y'all. But when I walk in here, okay. I deal with excellence only. I don't deal with failure. I don't deal with doubt. When you say KRS One, you're talking about excellence. I'll battle MCs because of excellence. I don't battle to degrade another man or woman. That's not even hip hop. The reason we started battling is so that we can stop shooting. There was a guy named Africa Bam Bottom. <laughs> Africa Bam Bottom. Before he was Africa Bam Bottom, they used to call him Frank Train. He was part of a, of a New York City gang called the Black Spade. Africa Bam Bottom. Now remember, the word here is competence. Africa Bam Bottom, New York City, 1972. He goes and enters a writing contest. The writing contest is by Unicef. Unicef says anybody who can write an essay about Africa will go there. The winner of the essay about Africa gets to go. So gang member Africa Van Bob or Frank Trump went and signed up for the essay writing contest. Let me say it again. Gang member Frank Trump signed up for an essay writing contest on Africa. He won. Out of everybody in New York City, gang member, Frank Train, won the city-wide rubbing essay. It said to now. 
He gets to Africa. An African chief of Zulu Nation, the original Zulu Nation in Africa, the tribe that defeated the French in England. That Zulu Nation, the tribal chief, said, Africa, man, he said, Frank Train, what you guys doing in America is what we've been doing here in Africa for years. It's called tribal warfare. It doesn't get anywhere. One gang is this, another gang is that. What you gotta do is unite all the gangs. Then you have real power. Africa Van Bonner jumped on the flight, came back to the United States, and he said to the black spades, I quit. I know more about this. I have enlightenment. I understand the bigger picture. I am competent to what is going on. Now, understand the word competent. Do you know what you're doing? So you college students here, this is the question that should be on every one of your heads. Do you know what you're doing? This is the problem with the United States today. The right people are in the wrong position. And the wrong people are in the right position. <laughs> in this country has nothing to do with hate. It has to do with incompetence. Again, it has nothing to do with hate. Don't nobody hate America. That's a lie. Oh, they're trying to kill us. The whole world wants America dead. That's to keep y'all afraid. The rest of the world loves America, wants America to, to prosper. Most of their, their children, their parents, their investments are here. The problem is incompetence. Do you know how to run a country? Just because you were voted in don't mean you know what you're doing. <coughs> I stepped up on this stage. I sat right, I stood here and listened. No arguments. Incompetence. You need to tell me all this equipment of you. These fans are rocking y'all. Y'all jump down here and start partying. No monitors? Now, this is not criticism. I'm pointing out real truth in your face while it's happening to you. How long are we going to sit back and allow incompetence to rule? When I step on this stage, I want excellence. This is EAW system. EAW is one of the strongest systems in the world. I've played on EAW systems for years, since I began. I know exactly how they're supposed to sound. Excellence. I'm not better than anybody. I'm not better than sound. But I am different. When I get on the mic, I'm not half-assing you. I'm not mediocre with you. I'm not giving you 50% of it so I can run out of here. When I'm here, I'm here. Competence. Do you know what you're doing? Just because you're head of the FBI don't mean you know what you're doing. Start with Ronald Reagan. 
So just like this band played so eloquently, but they played without monitors, that made them more excellent. Hear what I'm saying? When you can play without what you need to be excellent, that's when you rise to excellence. If you have everything you need to succeed, you will never be excellent. Ever, never. You'll just do well because you had what you needed. But when I stepped on this stage, there were no monitors here. That's a violation. But however, the band played anyway. And they gave it their all, and they rocked y'all like this, but no models. That is called hip hop. That act, that event. Hip hop is not rapping. It's not DJing. It's not dancing. It's an event. Hip hop just happened up here, and I want to point it out to you. It just happened. The band played, and they didn't have what they needed. 1970s. Nobody will give us a recording contract. They say we can't sing. All we do is talk. Rap, that's all y'all do. That ain't real music. We said, okay, we're going to do our own thing over here in the corner. It's so, okay. Ah, you know, ah. Now we over here in our own world doing our own thing. Here come the mainstream. Wow, you, out of all these people in this room, you. We're going to make you the star for everybody. Well, wait a minute. Everybody here can rap. No, we're not interested in everyone. Just you. So a guy named Curtis Paul rocks this. Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up! Curtis Paul was the first recording artist to sign to a major recording label called Mercury Records. We thought this was the greatest day of our lives. Finally, rap is being accepted. Now stop here for that. We're young, we're like 13, we're like 12. We're rapping, let me say it again. We're 13, we're 12. We're 13, we're 12. We're in the corner, rapping, rapping. Mainstream said, everything you do in it has no value and gets no respect. We said, okay, no problem. We're going to go over here in our corner and do our own thing. As we start doing our own thing, here come the mainstream. Recording contracts for everyone. 100,000, 300,000, half a billion. A million, 50,000, six contracts going out. Almost a billion dollars in contracts. Recorded contracts. Billions of them going to artists. So everybody now wants to rap. A guy making pizzas suddenly can rap. So everybody's rapping, 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 everybody rapping, but do they know what they're doing? Of course not. Here's what happened. A guy named Cool Herc, we used to call him Cool DJ Herc. 1967, he comes from Jamaica. All of this is online too. That's why I'm breezing over to get the real me. Cool Herc. Father of hip hop, he's the first people, first graffiti writer, first DJ, and first MC. That's why we call him the father of hip hop. That's an interesting thing. You see the double XL picture, the greatest in hip hop. I'm the only recording artist out there. 
protest. That was his Anyway. <laughs> cool Hart comes out and starts playing his music. Now you know the story. He comes out 15th, 20th Central Capital in the Bronx. He's playing his music, 1972, he's dropping the needle on the brakes. Uh, blah, 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 blah. He starts playing breaks, he starts dancing, he's playing dancing, blah, blah, blah. Now hip hop is born. 1979, a group called Sugar Hill Gang comes out. But the problem with the Sugar Hill Gang is that nobody knew that. See, before 1979, like 1970 to 1979, you had to know either Cool Herc, Africa Bambaataa or Grandmaster Flash. If you didn't know those people, you were not rapping. It's not like today, any of you, just if you got mic, a little music, you just start rapping. That was against the rules back in the days. You, know, you just rap, man. You rapping, you ain't got no juice. Y'all know what you said. I may be speaking above you. You ain't down by law. You ain't got it like that. These are the terms we used to use. I'm down by law. That's how I get to wrap the mic. I'm down by law. How you down by law? I got community respect. When I fight, it's community respect. Everybody listening because I got the respect. Not because I sold a million tapes. Or that I got this chick over here and have made or I'm sitting up here next to a car with rims. None of that is hip hop. None of it. <laughs> that is called incompetence. Those that are recording this, please make this point clear. You see how many of our popular rappers go in the jail? Incompetence. Amen. How you get a million dollars and go to jail? Amen. Chaos <laughs> Mike doesn't get it. Oh, you the dopest rapper? Go to jail. <laughs> In confidence, you're handling the energy you don't know what you're doing with it. Now let's get better at this. We talk more history. Let's go into the energy itself of hip hop. What is hip hop? Hello. Mm. Don't throw it away. <laughs> what is hip hop? Hello. First, the quick answer is that hip hop is a response to the oppression we felt in the 1970s. It's the response to injustice. That's the quick answer. A deeper answer. It is the answered prayers of our parents. If you look at this spiritual and look at the spiritual history, our parents prayed for something. They prayed themselves out of oppression. Our grandparents, Lord, give us out of this oppression. Then God sends an answer. The parents never see it come. The answer comes, Lance, from home. I'm here. And they keep praying. Lord, send us the answer. The answer is right here. It's usually their children. Oh no, Lord, send me the answer. The answer's right there. Check the story of Moses. Check the story of Jesus. Check the story of David, of Isaac. Check these stories. You will see hip hop the exact way we, the, the, the cycle is exact. Exact. I'll point a few more things out. Where does it all come from? G-O-D. Those that 
that do not believe in God. That's your name. I love the atheist movement. I just can't be one. Because I have too much evidence for the existence of God.